In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my favorite travel planning tool. And in my opinion, this is a tool that everybody should be using, but very few people are. And that tool is Google My Maps. Stay tuned as I share how fun and easy travel planning can be with this powerful but simple to use tool. Now, you might be wondering what Google My Maps is. Maybe some of you have heard of it, but I can bet that a lot of you have not. And essentially what Google My Maps is, is a tool that allows you to customize a Google Map to reflect exactly what you wanna see. Now, obviously that is a very simple definition and we're gonna go into tons of detail of what that means in today's video, but in general, you can customize a map to look exactly how you want it to. One thing that makes this tool so awesome is you can do as little or as much as you want. Maybe you're a planner and you like to have your trips planned out minute by minute, hour by hour. You can do that with this tool. Or maybe you're somebody that's just looking for a spot to keep ideas for spontaneous decision making. Either or, Google My Maps can accomplish both goals. Okay, let's make our way into Google My Maps and I'm gonna show you exactly what I do to plan a trip using this tool. So you're gonna start by just pulling up Google. Now make sure you are logged into a Google account as that's gonna help you store the map that you create as well as log into Google My Maps. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to Google, plug in Google My Maps, now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you plug in Google My Maps, not Google Maps, because if you plug in just Google Maps, it's gonna take you to your standard Google Map, which you don't want. So then you're gonna click on the top search result, which is Google My Maps. It's gonna bring you to a page that looks like this. You can see some of my other maps already loaded in here. And then all you're gonna do is create a new map. Create a new map. Boom, and it's gonna pull up a map. And this is where we start. For our example today, I did a little poll on the YouTube community page asking which place or which destination people would like to see in today's video. And believe it or not, Ireland won. So in today's demonstration, we're gonna use Ireland as our destination. Sorry for those that wanted other destinations, could only do one, so Ireland is it today. Also keep in mind, there's tons of different ways to use this tool. This is just the way I have found organizing my trips to be super, super helpful. So I hope you find this helpful as well. And to start our process here, all that we're going to do is name our map. So you can just double click on the map title up in the corner there. And I'm gonna name this map Ireland seven day trip. And you can add a little description as well. So maybe we'll say the goal of this trip is to explore Southern Ireland. And click save. So the first thing I do when organizing my map is I make layers. Now, the layers will make more sense as we go here, but I'm gonna show you how to create a layer. You can see here over on the left side of the screen, we have an untitled layer. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna rename it. And oftentimes, I like to organize my trip by day. So I'm gonna start with day one, and we're gonna do a Dublin walking tour. And say I wanna add another layer, I'm gonna go to the left side, you're gonna see an add layer button. I'm gonna click that. I'm going to add another layer. I'm gonna retitle that day two. And maybe we're gonna do a day tour to Wicklow Mountains and Glendalock. Save. And I'll continue this process for every single day of my trip. So as you can see here, I went ahead and added a few more layers. So now you can see we have seven layers here, one for each day of our trip. 
Now remember, Google My Maps is not necessarily a research tool, and this is more of a tool to organize the logistics and ideas of your trip. You're probably going to do research elsewhere. Though you can do a little bit in here and I'll show you later. Now, I'm going to show you how to start adding stuff to this map because ultimately that's what we're looking to do, right? So let's go to day one. We're going to click on day one layer here over on the left side. And we have a Dublin walking tour. So let's find our first spot. Let's go St. Stephen's. Let's go St. Stephen's Green here. And as you can notice, they have this nice search feature so you don't have to know the exact dress, address of everything. So I'm going to go St. Stephen's Green, which is a nice park in Dublin, and boom, it's going to take me there. And now you can see there's a little green point that pops up on the map. Now, you still have to add this to your map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this plus sign and I'm going to add it to my map. And now I've just made a point on my map. But I don't really like the way this looks, so I'm going to customize it a little bit. So I'm going to start by going to this pencil thing, and I'm going to click Edit. I'm going to start by editing the title, and I'm going to say St. Stephen's Green, and I'm going to put Start Walking Tour, just so I know that's where I'm starting. And I'm going to save that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to also go down to this little paint bucket here where I can change the style of my points. And for me, what I like to do is I like to organize my days by color. So we're going to start here maybe with this orange color. I like that color. So we're going to click it orange. Then I'm going to click on this thing that says more icons. And I can customize this point even further to signify that this is a walking tour spot. So I'm going to go up in this filter bar and click walking. And we get this little walking guy here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that guy and click OK. And now, as you can see, if I click out, you can see we have our little dot here with the guy walking. And this is going to be our first spot on the walking tour. Now let's add another one here. So let's go to Grafton Street. That's a, that's a happening place. Grafton Street. Plug it in the search bar. Boom. Gives me another point. I'm going to click Add It to Map. I'm going to edit this, and I'm going to click this, at, or I'm going to type this in as Stop 1 on our walking tour. I'm going to click Save. I'm going to go to Color. I chose orange for my day one, so I'm going to go back to that orange color. I'm going to click that orange color. I'm going to go to my icons, and as you can see, my walking guy is already down here at the bottom. I'm going to click that, and boom, I have my second walking tour point. I went ahead and added a few more walking tour stops on our map here, as you can see on the left-hand side. Now, when you zoom out, you should be able to see all of those walking points. You might be wondering, it looks kind of busy, is there a way I can change the look of the map? And I totally agree, this map, the way it is, looks kind of hectic and it's hard to see your spots. But if you go scroll down to the bottom on the left here, you can see this base map. Go ahead and click that. And this is going to allow you to change the look of the map. So maybe we do something like this. Now, this looks a lot simpler and you're able to now see your walking point stops a little bit easier, which I kind of like. Now that we have all of our walking tour points picked out, one tool that I like to use to see if this is even going to be possible in a day or how long it's going to take me is I like to use a tool called the ruler tool. So to find that, you're going to go just below that search bar at the top of your screen and you're going to click the thing that looks like a ruler. And what the ruler does is it allows you to measure distances between points. And it'll give you a rough guesstimate on how far you're going to be walking. So I click on that ruler tool. I click on my first point in St. Stephen's Green Park. Then I'm going to click on my second point, my third point, my fourth, my fifth, and my sixth point. I'll double click. And you're going to notice now it has estimated 1.32 miles is what it's going to take to walk between those points. Now that's an estimate, but this can help you determine if it's going to be too far of a walk, too short of a walk, how long it's going to take you. 
So Meg and I really like to use this tool when crafting our walking tours. If you wanna take this even a step further, you can get walking directions between your points. So that way you can have turn by turn directions. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. You do that by going to the search bar again, and you're gonna click on this thing that looks like an arrow. When you hover over it, it says add directions. You're gonna go ahead and click on that. And what that's gonna do is create a new layer. So I'm gonna come down this new layer. I'm gonna rename this layer to walking tour directions. Click save. Then I'm gonna change this from driving to walking by clicking here, clicking the walking guy, boom. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start clicking on my points. So I'm gonna click on my first point, then I'm gonna click on my second point, and it's gonna give me walking directions. If I wanna add another destination, which I do, click add destination, then I'm gonna click on my third point, add another destination, then I'm gonna click on my fourth point. And now you have turn by turn directions between all of your walking tour spots, which is really nice. And I'll actually show you how to use this on your mobile device later in the video. But this can be really, really helpful for you. I added a few more points to our map, like restaurants and stuff, just to show you one thing. I oftentimes get questions about how do you know where to stay when you visit a new destination? Where should I find my hotel or accommodation? And I utilize this tool to help me decide. As you can see, I've already plotted out some restaurants, some destinations that I wanna visit, and you can use those points to help dictate where you should stay. So as you can see here on my map, all of my destinations that I plan on visiting kind of center around one area. So I'm gonna to wanna to try to find an accommodation in that area based on what I wanna see. And to do this, I'm gonna go back to our base map and change the look again to that detailed map. So that way I can see things like hotels on it. And I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna see what kind of hotels I can find in this area. Um, as you can see here, we have the West Barry Hotel, we have the College Green Hotel. Let's do that one. That one has a 4.5 star rating, which is kind of nice. You can see the website is linked right there. So I can check it out to see if it's in my price range or not. But if I decide to stay here, I'm gonna add it to my map. I'm gonna click the orange color because that's what we decided for day one. I'm gonna click my bed icon and boom, I have found my accommodation. And so this can be a great way to help you dictate where you should stay in a new destination. Let's move to day two. And what was so awesome about us creating layers for each day is that you can toggle layers on and off. So if I don't wanna see day one's activities and events, I can just toggle it off. That way it gets rid of all of those map points so that way your map looks a lot more simple and a lot less overwhelming. Now for day two, we're gonna do a day tour to the Wicklow Mountains and Glendalock, which I would highly recommend by the way. And we're gonna do a tour from, let's say, Get Your Guide. This is actually a great tour. Meg and I did this ourselves. And we wanna do this tour. So we're gonna start by gathering some information. As you can see here, I added our starting points for our tour. But maybe you want to add the website for the Get Your Guide link. And as you can see, I just copied and paste, pasted the Get Your Guide link into this map point, which is really nice when you're traveling around to access information super quickly and efficiently. So if at any point I need to access when the tour starts, when the tour ends, what do I need to bring? Boom, I just click on the link that I already have embedded in my map, which again is a really nice feature to have and to keep you organized. You can also add descriptions to your map point, which is really nice and I utilize this feature a lot, especially when I'm traveling to maybe a museum or maybe some sort of historical area because sometimes I like to make note of different facts and things to give me a little bit more appreciation of what I'm visiting. So for example, we're going to the Wicklow Mountains. I'm gonna plug that in, Wicklow Mountains. Create a map point. I'm gonna add it to my map. 
I'm going to edit it here. And I'm going to add uh, Braveheart was filmed here. And that way, when I visit that location, I now have a little perspective of potentially what I'm looking at, and I can appreciate my travel a bit more. Another feature that I really like to use is the ability to add a photo to a map point. Because oftentimes when I'm getting inspiration for travel, whether it be perusing Instagram or watching a vlog on YouTube, I'll maybe see a specific photo that I wanna recreate or get inspiration from when I'm traveling. So you can totally do that right here in Google My Maps. So say you wanna visit the Cliffs of Moher, which if you're going to Ireland, you can't miss the Cliffs of Moher. So I'm going to do the Cliffs of Moher. I'm going to add it to my map here. And then what you can do is you can actually add a image or photo. And the reason I like to do this is because then when I get to that spot or say we're at the Cliffs of Moher, I remember, hey, I wanted to get that photo because it looked super, super cool and I was really inspired by it. So what I'll do is I'll just browse my computer, um, take a screenshot of the photo, and I'm going to add it here. And now you can see, I now have that photo inspiration for myself when I'm at that destination, which is really cool because oftentimes when you're taking everything in, it can be easy to forget to take pictures and things like that. So I utilize the ability to add photos to my map point as a great tool to make sure I'm capturing what I want to capture. Now, what really makes all of this work worth it, creating a custom map, filling out all your points, deciding what activities and restaurants you want to go to, what really makes all of it worth it is being able to use it while you travel. Now, unfortunately, the way you have to build these maps is through a desktop. There's no way to do it on your mobile device, though you can view it on your mobile device. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. Square one, you need to make sure that you have Google Maps downloaded on your phone. That's gonna be really important. Number two, you have to make sure that you're logged into the same Google account that you are on your desktop, because that is how the map is going to transfer over to your phone. Once you open up your Google Maps app, you're gonna click on the app, and you're gonna go down to Saved, which is at the bottom of your screen. Then there's gonna be three options for you at the very, very bottom that says timeline, following, or maps. And you're gonna click on the maps one. And you should see all of your maps already downloaded in this area. And for myself, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my Ireland seven day trip, and it is going to load my map. Once your map is loaded, you're already gonna see all the points that you created on your desktop pop up on your map on your mobile device. So you can see your restaurants, those walking tour points that I put in, all in orange there. Then if you go to the bottom of your screen, you're gonna see a view map legend. You can go ahead and click on that. And that's gonna show you your layers with your different days and everything you plan to do on those days, which is really, really nice. The points on your map are entirely interactive as well. So you can click on them, whether it be like the, this restaurant, like the fire steakhouse, you can click on it, you can get directions there. Um, Maybe let's go look at that one that I added the photo for. So over by the Cliffs of Moher, I can click on my Cliffs of Moher points and you can see my photo of inspiration, uh, the photo that I'm trying to maybe recreate or just get inspired from. So what's awesome is even on the mobile device, even though you can't create the maps on your mobile device, it's still super interactive and very, very helpful when you're traveling because you all know there's nothing worse than like having to Google the directions and uh, what time is this restaurant open? What time, is it, what time does it close? All of that information is right at your fingertips when you create a map like this. One last feature I don't want you to forget about is the fact that you can share your Google Maps with other Google accounts. This is really, really beneficial when you're traveling in a group because you can share your My Map with a group of people and they can view it or edit it. So that way everybody's on the same page when you're traveling and everyone has all the information that you need. 
So whether you're traveling with some friends or just some siblings or maybe your family, sharing your Google Map is a great feature that allows everyone to be on the same page so no details are missed or no information is missed. I feel like I could go on and on about Google My Maps and to be honest with you, I'm just scratching the surface here and there's still so many features that I didn't even explain or didn't even talk about. So maybe I'll make a part two if this video does well and you guys find this valuable. But for me, My Maps really helps me be present when I'm traveling. It allows me to focus on what I'm trying to focus on rather than having my head down in my computer or my phone the entire time I'm traveling. I'm way more present because all of that research and work was done ahead of time and it's laying in front of me in a digestible way. If you enjoyed this video, I would highly recommend checking out the video I made about how to find cheap flights using Google Flights. That again is a really powerful feature that Google offers and I would highly recommend getting familiar with it because it can save you hundreds on your flights. Thanks for watching this video though. If you liked it, please, please, please give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to our channel for more content like this. We will see you in the next video. Whew.